Hi, everyone. It's Deborah Hamilton. And tonight I'm really excited because I love when things come together and support the MAP program. Hi, Stephanie. It's Deborah Hamilton, Hamilton Law and Mediation and the MAP community program, which you're on right now. And of course, the Why Do Pets Matter podcast that you can get on any of your podcast platforms. Don't forget to listen. Tonight, I'm so excited. We're going to bring together something that's out there in the public and have it supported by the MAP plan. Because, you know, the MAP plan talks about navigating the journey your pet takes when you can't care for it. And the Pet Smart checklist for evacuating with your pet covers one of the Ds. Uh, disaster. We know that the Ds are divorce, delay, dementia, disease, disaster, divorce, domestic violence, deployment. Um, and there are two more that my brain isn't thinking of, but there are two more. But we have to remember that our pets need to be cared for no matter what happens to us. So I was so glad to come across this checklist because it has a lot of really great information. It'll be part of the recording um, email you get tomorrow. It was also a part of the lead up to this program so that you can keep it and check off what you need. But let's start really quickly with going through it because it has a lot of great information. And of course, because you're a member of the MAP community, we know that the 90s really could result in a disaster. So it's not just preparing for a disaster, how it is defined, but rather preparing for any of the Ds, which could turn into a disaster if you're not prepared. Because if you pass away, if you get divorced, if you're a victim of domestic violence, if you have a disease, if you're deployed, all sorts of things, uh, you won't be able to make a plan that moment, which is why you come here every week. And we always have a great discussion about disasters or divorce or deployment anything that really creates havoc in the life of your pet because something has created a little bit of havoc in your life. So let's start with looking at this checklist. It is an amazing piece of documentation because it lists six things that are really important to remember when you're preparing to evacuate with your pet. And the first part of course is Identification and documentation. I have to tell you that I must state that all the time, that you should have a file somewhere brightly colored that will enable people to find out who's who in your pet family, whether or not they are good or bad with other animals, whether or not they've been vaccinated, are they up to date, are they friendly with other animals. These papers and documentation show that you own these pets and that they're vaccinated and that they're friendly or that they aren't good with cats or they are good with cats or they load into a trailer if they're a horse or they don't load into a trailer. These are things and information you wanna share because addressing the needs of the pet, one of the A's, which includes all of their idiosyncrasies, is part of putting together their identification and documentation. Now, PetSmart says, update your identification tags, take a recent photo and a copy of your pet's medical records. But there also should be some information regarding how your pet matriculates and transitions. There should be some information regarding uh, their microchip um, and maybe their AKC number or their ILP number, and also a description so Stella, my new English Cocker Spaniel, is called a roan and tan, and she has a big white spot on the top of her head. So if you want someone to identify your dog, make sure you write down what are those identifying characteristics. And Jane, my cat, is gray, but she has four white feet and she has a little white mustache. So that would identify her to a greater extent than just saying she's a gray cat. So when you're doing the identification and documentation, when we're talking about the MAP plan, making sure that you do a little bit more than just update your pet's tags is something we plan for and we provide for in our workshops. The second piece is that you should have emergency supplies. We call this the go bag. They call it the emergency supplies. You should absolutely have some sort of food, water, um, refuse bags, for lack of a better word. 
uh, some maybe a brush or a comb, any medication, a day or two supply or more if you can put that away in a bag so you can grab and go. I know if Connie Kohler was here, she would be saying, yes, I've got that bag right by the door and ready to go. And every time there is an emergency in California where things might go south, she moves that bag from the hall closet to her car. It is so important to have that ready to go and not have to stop and fill a bag full of food. I mean, you can rotate it every first of the month or every, you know, every 15th of the month in and out of a bag, but it's ready to go. Just throw some chow in, just throw some canned food in, whatever it is your dog eats, some treats. Um, you should also have an extra leash and harness or collar because what happens if something breaks? You know, we're always here about an air and a spare. So you really want to have more than one, probably two. Don't necessarily take a flexi lead because if you're in a shelter situation, you're not gonna be able to use it. So just take two six foot leads, that would be great. And of course, water is a big issue. Sometimes when you go to a different place, the water can make your dog, um, their intestines get a little testy. So having bottled water, I know that seems very bougie, However, sometimes that keeps you from having to clean up diarrhea. So think about that, that you might have a bottle or two of bottled water just to transition them to the new water. Their third suggestion is to locate and identify pet-friendly shelters. Um, they suggest you reach out to family and friends for assistance, which is great. But in the MAP program, we always say check with your state or county or city to see what emergency situations um, they have set up for pets. And also you need to make sure you set up for emergency situation five miles, 10 miles and 20 miles away because you don't know how much of the area will be affected. And if you have animals that need safe harbor, a bird that needs heat and the electricity is out everywhere, you might want to know that you can go five miles or 10 miles away to make sure that your bird stays safe. So don't just look in your immediate backyard, but look in the backyard of the two towns down or um, across the state line or whatever, where you can go to be safe. It's really important to make sure that you know all of your alternatives beside your friends and family, what's available because states now after Hurricane Katrina have really created emergency evacuation plans that include your pet. Maybe not horses, which means you're gonna to have to really be proactive. Maybe not snakes or tarantulas, but you know what you have, you know what you need and start looking before you need it. This is a real bugaboo. The, third, the fourth one they have is transportation. I remember keeping a huge van, not because I was going to very many dog shows anymore, but I could fit all my dogs in one van. I had nine. And so you really want to make sure whatever vehicle you have can fit all your pets. Um, if you have dogs and cats, make sure they can be in the car together. Uh, if you have dogs, make sure they can be in the car together. I have two girls who get along beautifully as long as they're not in the back of a car together. Uh, so you need to know your pets. You need to practice. It's really, really important. Um, and you need to make sure that, you know, your car is gassed up if uh, an emergency is coming. Um, and that you've practiced um, how to evacuate with your pets. If you have small animals and you can take public transportation, look into the variables of taking your pets on public transportation. If you have big animals, make sure that you know where you can go and how you can park with a trailer if you have a horse. Very important. Um, the fifth evacuation tip from the PetSmart checklist includes leaving your emergency contacts. Now we all know about that because I am a stickler for saying have a note somewhere visible telling people where your emergency information is, what color is that bright yellow, bright orange, bright blue file, and where it is so that people can find out the information they need um, to help your pets if you're not there or for you to grab and go if you're leaving. It should have your veterinarian's number. It should have your pet sitter's number. It should have um, your number and anyone's number who can take care of the dogs for a short time or a long time if the emergency happened to you or if there's a disaster pending that you've given permission to evacuate these pets. 
So it really is important that you write down the emergency contacts and the emergency people who can take your pets for you if you are not there. And of course, as you know, the MAP plan always asks you to share that information. That's what P means, publish. If you don't publish that information with friends and families and neighbors, then nobody's going to know that you've set up this program. And it's so important. So make sure when you have the plan put together, you share it with people who may be able to help you implement it in the event there's a disaster, help you get out with your pets. Maybe your neighbor will take the cats and you'll take the dogs and you'll meet up somewhere else. Maybe your neighbor will take your cats and dogs if the emergency comes and you're not home. So much information to review, to prepare for, and to make sure that you have in place. And then finally, I love the sixth one because I think I'm going to add it to the P of MAP. So not only will you publish all of your plans, you'll practice all of your plans. I never thought to add practice as a P. I always talk about practicing getting your pets into their cages or their little kennels and taking them, but I have never sort of hooked together the P of publish with the P of practice. It really is important to see how long it takes you to hook up your trailer, how long it takes you to load the horses, how long it takes you to load the cats and dogs, how long it takes you to pull all the information together to put in your car and drive away, how long will it take you to get down the hill if you live on the top of a hill. All of these things are important to save your life and to save the life of your pets. Um, so I've given you so much information now, and it, I think I've done that in like record time of 10 minutes, but I just wanted to make sure that we created a platform on which to have everyone start thinking about the evacuation checklist. So I'm going to check in with Stephanie, who's the only one who happens to be here tonight, but I'm so glad you are. Stephanie, I know you have Yoda, and I'm sure you have some sort of a, an emergency evacuation checklist if god forbid something was happening in your area and you had to catch yoda and get him out uh yes because there were a lot of intense rainstorms um for instance we have life jackets um for yoda and we have our map care plan as well it really is important i mean if there's flooding and you have a life vest for your pet how brilliant is that to make sure you put it on so that while you're evacuating with your pets, God forbid they get away from you, they have a life vest on. That's so smart. Yes. Um, part of that too was navigating some of the transportation services locally and being sort of ready to either take a bus or hunker down. I know it, it really is a choice you have to make and hunkering down may be the safest way. If you say live in a two story house, maybe it would be okay. Floodwaters, I'm not so sure because some houses uh, become compromised and they float away. So it's not good to be on the second story of a house that floats away. However, it really is important to check out that public transportation that you might be able to avail yourself of to get to higher ground. So important, so important. So tonight, it was really important for me to share this Pet Smart Charities Pet Preparedness folder with you guys, because we talk about this all the time. And I, I often wonder whether um, my wonderful community thinks, well, this woman talks a lot about this, but does anybody else believe this is as important? And for sure, let me tell you, there are so many large industrial pet groups that are taking the lead to try to create a softer landing for animals in the event there's a disaster, in the event that there's an emergency. Um, with domestic violence now, they are also creating shelters where people who are the victims of domestic violence can come with their pets. So that's one of our Ds, domestic violence. If you want to evacuate and you have a horse, um, you really need to know where you can evacuate to. So these are important ideas and ideals for you to step up and really make that plan and practice it. I know that, Stephanie, you've probably practiced putting the 
vest on Yoda uh, so that you're not just doing it when you need to, because that's when you're nervous and he's nervous. And if he's not used to it, it could be a real fun event trying to put the life vest on him. Have you have you practiced with him? Does he like it? Uh, yes, we've taken it um, out in on walks and things like that and gotten like other kind of accessories as well um, that are specifically for pets. So that has sort of helped um, to sort of be really aware and understand the different ways to navigate through whatever the weather brings about. That's so important because to practice so that the animals think it's sort of not an emergency because you don't want to try to do these things when mm -hmm. everyone's cortisol levels are high because of all the danger that's impending. You want it to be sort of like second nature so that they step into the crate, they step into the trailer, um, they get into the car, they get into the life vest, uh, so that this isn't something that is new and interesting to them. Of course, if you haven't practiced, um, don't, don't leave it behind because it's too difficult to put on. Um, simply try to do it in a, in an efficient manner. Remember I said that, you know, when you are, um, creating this plan and, and making these evacuation plans, you have to try to set up so the things are ready to go. So the bag should be ready to go with food. I mean, switch it out every 60 days, every 30 days so that the chow is nice and fresh. But with horses, make sure you have bales right there by the door so you can throw them right into the trailer, that the grain is right there ready to go. Whatever it is your animal needs should be easily available because it is so important for all of us to be ready to go. I mean, the mudslides come and if you have, oh, 25 minutes to get out of the house and grab all of your things and the animals' things, won't you be grateful that you took time tonight or tomorrow night when there is nothing going on um, and put together the go bag for your pets? Uh, I really think that the most important pieces of the uh, puzzle are to be redundant. Uh, make sure that you have that file ready and able to go because being able to pick it up and run is great. Being able to have your neighbor or the person who is uh, your pet caregiver have it ready to grab and go if you're not there is such a relief for you and is such a relief for that caregiver because they know what you want. They're not second guessing. They're not saying, oh, what would Deborah do? No, they don't want to say, what would Deborah do? Deborah wrote it down. And they're gonna do the best they can given the circumstances, but at least they have a guide, a skeleton to follow. And I think that's what the most important piece is. And as Stephanie said, making sure that you create uh, the ability for your pet to try these things out before you might need to use them, especially given the changes in the atmosphere and the changes in um, climate and the uh, extremes of weather we're having, uh, it really is important. I'd like to add that if in fact you hunker down, which I understand people do, and that's great, it's not necessarily you have to leave, but if you hunker down, make sure that you, A, have an escape route if in fact something happens, uh, B, that if in fact the lightning and thunder is so loud and crazy, even in your own home, put your pet on a leash. So Stephanie would put Yoda on a little leash just in case um, a clap of thunder came or a tornado went by just so that she wouldn't have to hold him in her arms per se. She probably would anyway. However, if God forbid he was ripped out of her arms, she would at least have a secondary connection to him. Um, so it's really important to consider that. With horses, it really is difficult. If the, if the weather is really terrible or if there's a fire, sometimes the best thing to do is to release them to let them find high ground. If you're in a, in a relatively safe neighborhood without a lot of cars, um, that might be your best bet than to try to get down with them. Um, there are so many things for you to consider 
And the last thought I'm going to leave with you tonight is to consider having a conversation with your close neighbors who also have animals. Some of you might remember that during COVID, I always walked around and left three by five cards in the mailboxes of my neighbors to let them know that I'd be happy to care for their pets if something happened to them. And they all came to the house and said, thank you so much. We were really sort of worried about that. And now we know you're here. And um, if you need anything, please let us know, which creates community. Um, and if there is any group that loves to be part of a community, it's the pet owner group. Um, so making sure you have people who can step into your shoes or who you can step into their shoes and you all have really gotten together to understand each other is huge. So before I sign off tonight, Stephanie, is there anything you'd like to add? Because I know that Yoda is so important to you. Um, yes, so important. Just really appreciate that this has continued and we're able to join today. Thanks so much, Deborah Hamilton. Well, I'm so glad, Stephanie, you were here. And again, it's Deborah Hamilton, Hamilton Law Mediation, and this wonderful MAP community. We talked about the Pet Smart Evacuation Checklist for your pet. Not only did we appreciate, and you will get a copy of it with the recording, but we added a few specific additions that we think are really important for those who are making a plan for their pets for evacuation. Um, I do want to tell everyone that I won't be here on the 1st of May because I will be in Kentucky giving a program uh, for the equine rescue and adoption. Uh, so I will not be here. We won't have a first Wednesday of the month meeting. We will have uh, the third Wednesday of the month meeting. I will see you all on May 15th. Um, I will not see you May 1st. My apologies, but I can't get here because I will be in the midst of giving a program. Um, so I apologize and I should have done better at looking at times of the program, but this is a wonderful opportunity for these pet owners uh, to really understand how to care for their rescue horses. Uh, so I'm really thrilled. Uh, but until the 15th, everyone take care. Of course, Stephanie, kiss Yoda for me. I love that baby. And for all of you out there, kiss your pets. This is Deborah Hamilton, and we'll see you the third Wednesday of May. Take care.